Well, I'm down here for my third year now, um, looking at the Falkland Island butterfly, the Falkland fritillary, and uh, it's part of a PhD uh, project, but uh, the main aim really is to look at how viable the butterfly is on the islands, how, how to ensure that it continues to survive on the islands, and to do that it involves a lot of clambering around rocks and things, looking at, at where it lays its eggs, looking at uh, where it feeds, and just looking around the islands to find out where they are. There was a whole period in the 1920s and 1930s where nobody saw the butterfly and uh, people were really worried that it had gone extinct in the islands. And I think that's, that's really part of what I'm trying to do here, to make sure that nobody has that worry again in future. There are violet plants all around the islands. It depends on violet plants. The caterpillars live on violets. But one of the, the big things that we don't know about the butterfly is really its life cycle. Um, it really requires somebody on the islands to do a captive breeding program to actually watch it as it changes. Butterflies fly for about um, five, six days is, is about the longest I've recorded any butterfly you know, catching it one day and then catching it six days later. What probably happens is the eggs are laid right from the period from December through to January. The caterpillars hatch out and then they go into hibernation as caterpillars. And then what happens is that they wake up when, it, when it's spring or early summer, munch their way through as many violet plants as they can, um, turn into chrysalises and then hatch sometime. Obviously we don't know the answer to that. I don't think anybody's ever seen a, a Falkland fritillary chrysalis, even, on, even in Latin America. Um, then they hatch from that and that's the butterflies you've seen. The first question people ask me is, is what a butterfly is doing in the Falkland Islands with you know, constant 15, 20 mile an hour winds. And Almost the first thing you realise when you actually start looking at butterflies is that we may live in 20 mile an hour winds, but a butterfly operates at a very, very different scale. So they're flying at about 30 centimetres above the ground, over the top of Diddle D, where it's usually about half the wind speed that it would be at, at head height for a human being. And when you get down to the level of actually where they're laying their eggs, then you're probably going to find that it's only about, the wind's only about one or two miles an hour down there, and really quite gentle, because they go for sheltered sites, very sunny, lots of rocks and bare earth around that can reflect the heat. So a good colony is one where there are some butterflies, and you're finding eggs, and you're finding caterpillars because that, that means they're going to be here next season as well. And luckily all the sites I've been to have had um, quite a few eggs and, and a lot of caterpillars. And there's a lot of caterpillars around here, which is, which is encouraging.